Hi, my name is Siegfried. Welcome to the My Olympus OMD blog. Today we're going to have a look at the two-step exposure technique. I will be going with you through some of the more technical aspects in the article. From there we will go and have a look at the camera, how I set the camera. And then finally we will go back to Photoshop to see how I develop these images. So enjoy, have fun, please leave a comment and thank you. So we had the two-step exposure technique. When you look at this background image, you see a crew, a film crew. This could also have been a photography crew. What is my role as hobby photographer? Am I the art director, the creative person? Or am I the more technical guy setting up and optimizing my camera? So here you see the two-step exposure technique. It's in two steps. Step one and step two. Step one is an external focus and step two is a camera focus. So in step one, with the art director or the creative guy looking at the image, at the scene or the subject, evaluating the scene and building my own exposure plan. In step two, I'm the set director and I'm looking at the camera and I'm optimizing my camera to give me the best possible results. Before we do that, we need to take a step back and look at the older exposure triangle and why I changed it. So the older exposure triangle was also looking at the image in terms of shutter speed and aperture or the scene, but somehow it combined it with a camera feature. And this made it very difficult to fully focus on the external part, the creative part of the image, and it resulted in a lot of confusion. If you do a search on exposure triangle on the internet, you will find so many explanations for ISO that it's really confusing and not helpful. With all the different definitions for ISO, ISO is, for example, it's a camera setting, it's not a creative fun function like I say, and it's safe to use ISO. ISO does not create noise. So what have I done? I replaced, I moved the ISO to the right place, to the internal camera focus, or optimizing the camera, and I replaced it with quality of light. So now we're truly evaluating our scene and building a strategy for our scene. So let's look at that. Is it good light quality for a landscape image like morning or late afternoon? What is the light inside the building? Do I need to adjust the light? Do I need to add a flash? Do I require a tripod? So you will really build your exposure strategy or your scene strategy based on the external conditions. What shutter speed, what aperture and what modifications. Tripod, the flash, using a reflector, filters like an ND or a polarizer filter. Now that you have your strategy, here you have an image of the camera and the signal path. You see the camera in the background. This is the reflected image signal coming off the scene, going through the shutter aperture onto the image sensor. This recorded signal from the image sensor then goes through the ISO, which is a system gain amplifier, and sent off to the image processor. So we're going to look at how to optimize my camera in two steps. So the first step is to enter the values and to find the right exposure. I assume we're all working in manual mode. So you will enter the shutter and the aperture you selected in step one when you evaluated the external scene. And then you will determine what ISO will support my shutter and aperture. In good daylight, 
the ISO will probably be on 200 and you might have to tweak your shutter and aperture to get a right exposure. Inside the building with poor light conditions you will have to up your ISO until you find the right exposure. If the ISO goes too high then you might have to tweak the shutter and aperture. So for example if you do not want to use ISO 6400 you would bring it down to 3200 but therefore you need to have a stop more light onto the sensor. That can be only done with the aperture or a combination of the shutter speed and the aperture. So to summarize, I will enter my camera aperture shutter speed values. I will determine what I call the scene ISO in the article. I will optimize these values until I get a proper exposure on my camera and I will select the final ISO. Let's have a look at what we did in this step here. You have two signals on the sensor and if you read my article at the bottom here you will read the image signal always has a noise component. So we have the same noise component because it's the same camera but in daylight I will be passing on a good amount of signal onto the sensor and I only need a small amplification ISO 200 to send the right signal off to the CPU. So I have a lot of clean signal and noise in the signal. In poor light conditions, I start off with a poor signal coming off the scene. I already have my noise. Now I have to amplify a lot. In this example, I had to go to 3200 on ISO. So a lot of amplification to get to the right signal for the CPU. And what do we see here? The noise was also amplified. And this is the reason why you see noise when you up the ISO. Because all we do is we're amplifying the existing noise in the image signal to get to the right level here. How can we improve that we have less noise and more clean signal here? We do that by optimizing the image sensor. How do we optimize the image sensor? By putting more light onto the sensor. How do we see that? Now this is a very helpful graph that you can memorize because we can build on this graph for more explanations in the future. So here we have our signal from the previous slide. You have noise and the clean image signal part. We refer to this as signal to noise ratio. We would like to increase the signal to noise ratio. And here we see that. So this axis here is signal to noise ratio. This axis is the amount of light or the amount of image signal transferred onto the sensor. So if we can increase the amount of light onto the sensor, I will be able to increase my signal to noise ratio. We do that using a technique ETTR. All it says is I'm shifting my histogram to the right. So I'm taking a histogram that looks like this and I shift it to the right. How do I shift the histogram to the right? By letting through more light onto the sensor. I do that with a shutter speed and the aperture. Not by adjusting the ISO. The ISO is only an amplifier amplifying what comes off the sensor. So the only variables determining how much light or image signal is reaching the sensor is the shutter and the aperture. So if I could open the aperture with one stop, I will double the amount of light onto the sensor. And this is how we optimize the image sensor. What happens? The moment we increase the exposure on the sensor, in other words, more light onto the sensor, I also record more tonal data. How do I see that? If you look at this graph here, you have your typical histogram. You have your points from 0 to 255 
and here you see the spread of tonal data in your JPEG file. In the last stop, the top stop, you have 50% of all your data. Amazing. From 128 to 255, in the second stop, you have 25% of your information or tonal data. And in these five stops here, you have another 25. So typically in the shadows, you will have little tonal data. And in the highlights, you have your most tonal data. So by shifting the histogram to the right, we move everything over to a more tonal data rich area. So when I have a histogram that looks like this, I will have little tonal data. This is a typical Olympus histogram, safely here, tucked in the middle. No recording here, so high tonal data is not recorded. And this is an optimized sensor, where I've shifted the histogram to the right without clipping it. So now the camera is set and ready to take the image. So guys, here you can see we on the EM5 Mark II on the recording I did. You can see that uh, the camera is in manual mode. I selected an aperture of 5.6 and a shutter speed of a thousandth to a second and the exposure meter tells me the scene is correctly exposed. The histogram tells me something about the exposure and something about what I'm recording, shadows, not so much midtones, highlights and the histogram tells me that I'm not recording maximum or optimum tonal data. A third thing that you can see from the histogram is the, these green parts here, these two here. These are the spot meter reading of the camera. So this happens automatically with all Olympus cameras. The spot meter reading is here in the center of the screen. And here you can see the spot meter probably, or not probably, definitely in this case reads both the, let's call it the shadow detail in this area here, and the highlight detail in this area. And you can see it, so I've got highlights here, and I've got shadow information here in terms of exposure. But what's nice here is I can immediately see that I'm well within the dynamic range of the camera. Now, okay, we do have darker areas, if you look here. So the camera indicates that with a blue here. If I would have been close to overexposing, I would have had red here. We will see it later. So if I really want to see how much further down the spot meter will go here, then I need to move the camera to this area here. So by moving the camera, the spot meter to the brightest area in the scene and the darkest area you can quickly see you know am i close to the limit and in the shadow am i close you can even calculate the number of stops so okay guys here you can see that i started to expose to the right so i started to move the histogram to the right um, I drop the shutter from f.6 to f5 and I also drop the shutter speed to, to a 640th. Okay? And by doing that, I increased the exposure with one stop. So I'm doubling the amount of light onto the sensor. My ISO is still on 200. You can also see that the complete histogram is moving to the right into the more tonal data area here. The same for the shadows. And then something interesting about the Olympus camera is it shows me that I'm slightly overexposing. I'm slightly in the danger area here, but it's green showing me it's still okay. If you now look at the image, you can see that there are slight overexposure. So when I add another third stop overexposure, you can see immediately full red on here. And if I look at the highlights, I can, I can clearly see I'm clipping 
heavily at this point here. So yes, correctly, I am getting more tonal data in the shadows, but I'm losing data now because I'm I moved from information to white. The moment I clip like this, everything here goes white. When I'm doing my post-processing, I do want to get some detail back here from these clouds. So guys, here you look at a different scene, totally different light situation. What you have is on the right here, you have a candle. You can see the yellow from the candle here and the shadow on the pen. And at the, this side of the room, you have two windows. So I wanted to get this with a light and with the shadows. When I evaluated the external, I decided instead of using a flash, which would have killed the shadows and everything here, to use a tripod, knowing that my shutter speed will go down, but I'm safely on a tripod now. So let's, let's have a look what happens here. You have your aperture and your shutter speed, and the camera tells me at ISO 3200, the exposure is correct. So what happens is the moment I increase the image signal onto the sensor, the histogram will show me and it will move to the right. Let's have a look what happens. So here you can see I increased the exposure with one stop, doubling the amount of light or image signal coming onto the sensor. Still at ISO 3200, that's okay. We're now optimizing the image sensor. So to do that, I had to drop the shutter speed. I reduced the aperture a little because I'm still safe in terms of um, depth of field. This is one of the advantages of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. So here you can see I increased the exposure again to plus two stops. So I doubled the exposure onto the sensor and I doubled it again. So now I'm really pushing the signal to noise ratio higher and higher. You see it from the histogram. You can see again, I'm getting a warning here in terms of the red, even if the histogram is still not completely to the right, I already get the first warning. You can see it here in the image. I'm happy at this point. And I'm going to take the image and this is the one that I prepared for the, you know, this is the one that you see in the article. So guys, here we in Photoshop. I'm in Bridge now. This is the two-stop overexposed image. Let's have a look at it. So I open it in Photoshop. It's the raw file. And here you can see it. So it's really very simple to bring it back. So I can go to the exposure here, enter minus two, and immediately the exposure is back to middle gray or 18% gray, and I can now start working on this image, knowing that I have more tonal data, a higher signal to noise ratio, and you can immediately see the results. Let's go down. I normally remove any uh, noise reduction here. I don't want any sharpening at this point. So I only did the correction there in exposure. I removed any sharpening or noise reduction. I open it in Photoshop. There we have the image. Now I can uh, enlarge the image a little. And here you can immediately see there's virtually no noise. You know, look at this. It's amazingly clean. And what you also have is the colors are very good. So I still get the yellow. When you now go back to the article, you will see these differences. With a with an image where I did no ETTR, there's a slight color breakdown there. And you will see that the shadows has a bit of a breakdown. The shadow detail or the tonal data is not that good. Whereas here, even in the in the hard shadows here, the image is still amazingly good. Keep in mind we did no noise reduction. If I take this image now to photo lab, if I had to open this in photo lab, I would probably clean this 100% here. So 
I'd be able to take an image like this with my EM5 at 3200 and I will get full detail with virtually no noise. This is amazing. So now you can, you know, do whatever additional image editing you like to do. Um, you know, we can, for example, add a little bit more contrast. Let's light it up a little. Just add a little bit more light. Um, I, I love to work with uh, curves. That's why I also enjoy curves so much in my pen F. That's not really a, a hard contrast, which I which I personally like. And uh, we can crop the image a little if we want. Um, but this is for me. This is enough, you know. So so I have an image here. Let's let's sharpen the image a little. I can I can uh, flatten the image, and then. Uh, Sharpen a little, do a quick sharpening. Uh, I personally don't add so much here. And uh, here's the final image. Now the one that is that I've put into the article is wasn't sharpened, so I only did this quickly to show you. Now you can see here with the aperture we use that the depth of field is not that great, but it's still for me this is a lovely image i'm happy with this okay guys thank you for looking thank you for taking the time it it, it took a little bit more time than i was hoping for uh, i've done several recordings and several editing uh, sessions to try and reduce the time but unfortunately with this technique there are so many other things that we need to discuss at the same time so I, I really hope this was of value to you and that it can help you. Please feel free to ask questions in the comment section or make any, any comments. I'm looking forward to your feedback. Thank you.